you have a girlfriend? Maybe so. Yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> How are you guys doing? You doing good? Can you hear me? Testing the mic. Checking it out. Seeing what's up. Hi, Zeus. So I'm still really getting used to everything. Okay, cool. Yeah. But I've been practicing for the 
for the last 20 minutes, going back and forth between everything to make sure it's all right. I'm still not, still not sure about the uh, whole uh, music situation. Can you still hear it okay? How's that? Is that a little better? But anyway, the music's not really important. So, hey guys. Uh, special show for you today. This is my first episode. This will be episode number two. First real episode. Um, where I show you some cool stuff. It's, uh, it's my kombucha demo. And basically, I'm doing this because I... I do this kombucha workshop occasionally, and I want to kind of move on to other things. Um, so recording it, making it into sort of like an online tutorial for people um, would help me so that I can kind of work on some other things. So um, hi, <laughs> welcome to the channel. Um, my show, Clem Can Cook, is going to be a healthy cooking show, kind of. It's a healthier cooking show. Um, I am a certified holistic nutritionist, and um, basically my job is to try to get people to eat more vegetables um, and not make it horrible. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Sorry. Um, <laughs> it's a... Uh, it's a challenge, and I know that it is, but um, that's that's kind of why I'm here, because everybody has trouble being healthy, including myself, um, and this is a judgment-free zone. Uh, I mean, unless you're a jerk, then I'm going to judge you, but if you have questions about how to cook, what to eat, um, come on by. I'm going to try to do this every week, Tuesdays, at around 3 o'clock. Today we had some tef technical difficulties because, like I said, I'm brand new to streaming. And I really don't know how all the buttons work and, <laughs> um, you know, how to do stuff. <laughs> so I think I'm doing pretty good so far. I have a lot of help and some nice mentors. Um, but yeah, that's where we are. So um, technically the first episode of the series, I'm going to kind of devote specific shows to specific things so the first six episodes I'm going to do are going to be about um, plant-based proteins so we're going to teach you how to cook with lentils and chickpeas uh, and tofu Zeus I know you're going to be excited for that one but um, for the next couple weeks this week and next week I'm going to do sp like specials so this week I'm doing the kombucha demo and next week I'm going to be doing a um, kind of a nutrition overview. Um, Zeus, in my last episode, suggested um, kind of like a, what should you be looking for um, when you eat stuff sort of episode. So we're going to um, we're gonna do that. So we're going to talk about how much protein you should be getting in a day, which actually varies per person. Um, how many calories you should be looking at, where to get um, all of your vitamins and minerals, sorts of supplements you could take. Um, which is going to be a, a good handy episode that hopefully you can go back and watch occasionally if you need help. Um, same thing with this kombucha demo. And all my videos are going to be archived on YouTube. So um, you'll be able to go back and watch them whenever you want. So today we're going to be t learning how to make kombucha at home. And uh, it's it's actually pretty easy once you get used to it. It's... Um, it's basically just brewing tea um, and then letting it sit around for a couple weeks and then doing other things to it. So really, every couple weeks you're going to devote about an hour to making your kombucha, but that's it. So if it's something that you drink regularly um, and you really like yourself, you'll definitely want to consider um, starting to make it at home because it'll save you a lot of money. So. Um, basically how we're going to do this is I'm going to show you a video that I recorded that is, um, what I had intended to do was to upload it to the video producer, um, program on Twitch and, oh man, thank you Zeus. I can probably go in, yep, here we go. I'm going to do it real quick, hold on. Sorry guys, kombucha demo. 
Yum. <laughs> uh, there we go. It it should work, <laughs> but uh, let me know if it doesn't. And I'll try to do it again. Okay, so yeah, that's fun. <laughs> like I said, I'm a noob. Uh, okay, so basically how this is going to work is I'm going to play a video and I'll still be here in the chat um, to answer any questions that you have. And then at the end, we'll just talk about it some more and answer any more questions you might have after that. Um, so it's, it's uploaded to YouTube and I'm going to have to play it. It's going to be of a different video quality, um, so it won't be as, you know, pretty but it'll still, it'll still do the job. And uh, eventually I'll be streaming from the kitchen and it'll, it'll be actually be live instead. Um, but up until we get to that point, this is how we're gonna do things. So all my other things so far are video recordings. And you'll notice that um, I use the term video producer in the video, uh, which obviously we're not doing anymore, but uh, just so you know, you're not watching, um, you're not watching a rerun or a premiere. I'm still here and I'm in the chat, uh, so it, it is live. And uh, if I need to pause it for anything to really get into something, I can. And we'll come back to this little scene. But yeah, does anybody have any questions before I play the video? Because I can just start it right up. If you don't, I'm excited. I watched it already and it's... It's all right. It's pretty good. It's basically what I would say if I was talking to you while you're here, so. <clears throat> no questions, I guess. All right. I'm going to I'm going to start playing the video. All right. Here we go. Playing the video. Ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. You ready? You want to come back on the stream? Come here, buddy. Say hi, everybody. I just had a bone. It was great. Don't lick me, please. <laughs> okay, so here's the deal. This is my first video producer upload. And today, I'm going to show you how I make kombucha at home. And it can be a little intimidating at first, but I've been doing it for over a year now. With I'm going to show you. <laughs> I don't want to say with great success, but with a lot of success. Um, and it's very easy once you get used to it. Can I interject real quick? Yes, you can interject. You should maybe tell people who aren't familiar with kombucha what it is. I'm gonna. Okay. But we're we're just like getting we into that. Time. Yes. My bad. Say hi. Hi, everybody. You don't have to come on the Okay, because I look terrible. Hi, everybody! <laughs> anyway, welcome to my kitchen. In the future, all of my recordings are going to be live, like live recordings. They're not going to be edited. They're just going to be me and the camera and the food. And I have three pets and a, a wife, so there might also be fights and noises and screams and phone calls and things. But that's what it's like. And stop falling over. <laughs> Alright, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to walk you through the process from start to finish. I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about it. I'm going to show you how to do the things and tell you why you should do the things. Um, and I'm going to give you two of my recipes for the secondary fermentation, which is something that I'm going to have to lead up to, especially if you don't know anything about kombucha. So I'm going to put recipe down. And I'm going to bring this cat on screen. I left the cat trap. No, don't leave. Maybe she'll come back later. Okay, so for starters, kombucha. It's a fizzy probiotic beverage that's made from black tea or black and green tea or green tea. But most of the time it's a combination. And the reason for that is because in order to do what it does, it needs to have caffeine in it. So, a lot of people use just black tea because it's most, ca most caffeinated, but either one will work. 
I've done it both ways and you really do need at least some black tea in it in order to make it work. So what I've done ahead of recording is I've made a concentrate. So this is basically four cups of water that I boiled and then I steeped four tablespoons of loose leaf black tea in it for six minutes and then when it was done I strained it out. Then I added a cup of just plain organic sugar um, and I stirred it until it was dissolved and then I let it come to room temperature. So I did this this morning. Um, I really don't recommend doing it like the day ahead because the tea can separate from the water since there's so much sugar in it. Um, and then you'll have to like reincorporate it and can be kind of gross looking. So don't do that. I've done it before and I don't think it really affects the flavor or you know anything to do with the actual finished product but it's just more of a hassle because then you gotta like refrigerate it and then warm it back up and you don't want to do that it's just not worth it so um at this point if you're making it for the first time you have your tea you also have something that's called starter tea so basically when you're first starting out you have a cup of this liquid, which is like what you put in the bottles when you go to bottle it and flavor it, but they call it starter tea or just kombucha tea. This is the final product in here. And to make another batch, you take some of the old batch and then one of these weird gross blobby things on the top to make your new one. So what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna take the old stuff or the old one, the old SCOBY and some of the tea. It's called a SCOBY. It's an acronym for uh, SC, Symbiotic Culture of Bacteria and Yeast. I did it. So I just keep paper towels over mine and I do reuse them until they get kind of gross. Like this was just, I just put on last time. So I'm just gonna put this off to the side and try to make sure it doesn't get anything on the underside because anything that gets inside can contaminate your batch and you really don't want to do that because you have to throw it out and start over and it'll be a whole big thing. So before I take out the old SCOBY, what I have to do is sanitize all of my equipment. So I've already done it with this, this bowl here. I've sanitized it and sanitized this little scooper thing and you do that with just regular distilled vinegar. And the reason you do it is because you need everything to be the right pH. And when you're working with kombucha, that's usually around between three and four. And the reason for that is to prevent mold <laughs> from growing in your kombucha jar. And I know that doesn't make it sound any more appetizing, but it is really good for you, I promise. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna lift this to the side and you're gonna, you wanna sanitize your fingers too. And of course you guys, my cat is being annoying and making all kinds of noise right where I can see her, but I can't reach her. Hey Mia, Mia, can you tell me why you've decided to do that right now? Mia. Okay, so I've got a hold of this guy and I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's very slimy, so it's actually falling apart. All right, so here's one. This is the one that I want to keep because it was on top. So I'm just going to put that on the bottom and then I'm going to show this to you. This is the old one. If it's the old one, you don't have to worry about being too hard with it. If it's the new one, you want to kind of be gentle. And the reason for that is because the bacteria and the yeast live inside of these things. So let me show you. I put a towel up here for you so I can get it nice and close. This is a SCOBY. It's jiggly. <laughs> And the bottom side, you can see it's covered in these little yeasty tendrils, and that's part of what makes it fizzy. 
You can't have this go be rusty. Can you please move? Thank you. So what you can do is this, when you take it out, you can save it so you can make more batches later, or you can give it to somebody else with some starter tea. You can break it into smaller pieces and give it to more than one person, whichever, it doesn't matter. So if you're gonna break it into pieces and give it to other people, you could do it in half or in quarters. You really don't need very much. I'm gonna wash my hands for a second. And the reason why you don't need very much is because the fermentation doesn't come from the SCOBY, it comes from the tea itself. The SCOBY is just where the bacteria and the yeast live and kind of rotate around and stuff. What you can touch is a cellulose byproduct of the bacteria and yeast. So you do need it, but it's not essential. Um, it's, it's a good way for you to gauge how active the kombucha has been, but I've, I've watched a lot of training videos and there's a number of manufacturers that make, you know, 40 gallon <laughs> batches of kombucha. They don't leave scobies in it at all. If a scoby forms, they just take it off and they throw it away. It doesn't matter. It's, it's not integral to the product. That being said, if you're used to using it, there's no reason why you should stop. I still use it. It gives me a good idea of how the culture is going. And uh, yeah, the one that I showed you looked really good. Um, I've read people saying that you can use it um, two or three layers of SCOBY, but you really don't want to get much more than that because it starts to take up a lot of the jar. Not only that, but um, the more scobies you have in there, I've noticed that the fizzier your stuff is gonna be. I had a problem when I first started where all of my bottles, when I would go to open them up, would just fizz out and like explode and go all over the place. And you know, then I couldn't drink it. So there's no point to doing that. The whole point of going through all this effort is so that you can actually drink your tasty kombucha. So if you noticed, what I did there was I washed my hands and I dried them off on my towel and then I Dry them off again on a paper towel and the reason for that is and I don't know if you know this But when you have cats the cat hair gets everywhere So even though I have a hand towel here, I don't trust it to not leave cat hair on my hands So I use the paper towel to make sure there's no particles left before I keep going Because you absolutely positively have to make sure that you don't get anything in your jar or the quality of your kombucha can suffer so what I'm gonna do now, and I'm gonna move this so you can see it, because it should be pretty good. This has only been going for two weeks, so it should still be pretty fizzy. I want you to see, yeah. See how it's got bubbles on the top of it now? That's a really good sign. That's pretty good. For the past few months, I've been making it so that it's not very fizzy. I've been using a lot of green tea and I really haven't liked the results. So this guy is 100% black tea. It's a, just a plain Chinese black tea I used tea bags for. But the one that I'm gonna be putting in here now is all Assam tea, which I like the flavor of better. For a while, I wasn't able to get the loose leaf black tea um, and I got tea bags because I ruined my French press and I wasn't sure if I'd be able to, um, you know, get all of the tea leaves out, just straining it regularly, but it's worked just fine. So that's what I'm going to do in the future. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the starter tea that I need for my next batch. So usually I just do a cup. Um, you can do as little as a half a cup, but I usually do the whole cup um, so that it has a lot more cultures in it. It can go nice and fast. And I'm just going to put that with the scope. There we go. So, now that I have my starter tea and my scoby ready, I'm going to do sanitize all my bottles. So... I've got these 
And I've got my vinegar. And basically, I'm just going to pour it in there. Move on to the next one. Put the cap on. And swirl it around really good. Just like that. So, kombucha, like I said, it's a fizzy fermented tea beverage. And it's gained a lot of popularity in the U.S. in the past decade or so. Um, a lot of people have noticed a lot of positive effects from drinking it. Um, if you're not familiar with probiotics, basically what they do is help your digestion and your, your regularity. But what's special about kombucha is that it also has my antimicrobial and antifungal properties. And I say this because it's actually been researched. Um, there's been a number of studies where they test the um, the microbial effects of the fermented kombucha tea externally, not internally. It's hard to gauge when it actually gets into the body. But I have that information available on my website for you, and I'll give you a link uh, later on. But it's really fascinating. So a lot of people will also attribute um, various things to drinking kombucha, but none of them have actually been proven. A lot of it is just um, like folk tradition. So it's hard to say whether or not it's actually like responsible for those things. But I like to drink it because it has definitely helped my, my digestion and um, all of those lovely internal processes. For a while, before I started making it, I was drinking it about once a week, and I was kind of having a lot of digestive issues, like a lot of bloating and gas and nausea and things like that. And I feel like it's one of the things that helps me kind of get back on track. But a lot of fermented foods will do that for you as well. Um, and to be completely honest with you, I used to have two gallons of kombucha going and my life is so hectic that I actually forgot, <laughs> not really forgot, but I didn't make time to care for them. And each of them got to about five weeks of fermentation and I haven't been able to drink any of the ones that I've bottled from those two batches. They were just gross. And I love kombucha. They were atrocious, like I couldn't bring myself to drink them. So I'm getting rid of the one of them and I'm just gonna keep one going for now. And I'm gonna try to get my fermented foods from other things like, you know, fermented soy. <laughs> I hate yogurt. I like miso though. Miso is really good for you. I might try to eat some of that more often again. Okay, so next step. I have a couple of recipes that I'm gonna do. So, both of them require added sugar. So, like I said when we started, the tea concentrate is a whole cup of sugar. The bacteria and yeast will eat most of the sugar, but not all of it. And they will also use the caffeine in the tea to fuel their functions. And it's the combination of using the caffeine and eating the sugar that makes it fizzy. So, there is carbon dioxide naturally present in the kombucha, and that's the reason why it's fizzy. Um, it's kind of like soda, but it's very vinegary. Um, so that's one of the reasons why a lot of people flavor it. So when you do that step, you might also want to add some more sugar just to sweeten it up. So at this point, I'm going to see. <coughs> I'll be right back. So a lot of people I know that make kombucha at home do not test for the pH. 
but when I first started making it, that was that's the instructions I was given. So I do it. Um, and like I said, it's important to have the right pH range to prevent mold from forming. However, it will also tell you how close to being vinegar your kombucha might be. So these are not the best strips. They're lab strips, so the range is very high. Um, the ones that came with the kit that I first bought um, didn't go up very far. See, this is still within the, the three to four range, so it's not gonna be very vinegary at all. That being said, the combinations that I'm gonna use aren't gonna be very high in sugar, so I'm still gonna go ahead and add a little bit. Yeah. So this will actually taste really good. I'm excited. <laughs> I haven't had one in a long time that actually tastes good. Okay. So, at this point, what I'm going to do is call the secondary fermentation. So, I'm going to make a few using a recipe that I have for lemon ginger, and then I'm going to make some that are chai tea flavored. So, we're going to do the lemon ginger first, and the dry ingredients in that are a half teaspoon of sugar, and then a quarter teaspoon of dried ginger root and you want to do the dried things first because then the liquid when you pour it in will push it down the rest of the way um, we could also go ahead and do the lemon juice so it's a tablespoon of lemon juice and yes I use the bottled kinds from concentrate whatever it still tastes really good and it's cheap and that's kind of my MO so here we go. Okay, so for these, I'm, I'm only gonna do 10 ounces because I wanna get seven bottles out of it. Um, most of the time I do 12. 12 to 16 is the usual range. And I always put towels down because it gets really messy. I'm gonna stir this up again. I always stir my kombucha before I start bottling it because the yeast and the bacteria and stuff can like be in different areas of the jar and if you have all of the yeast in one jar it's probably going to explode on you. So I kind of need to replace my Pyrex cup but I think I see where 10 ounces is. Excellent. There's one. When you're finished with one, just kind of shove it over in the corner here. Then you just go on with the next one. I've tried making lemon ginger flavored ones before um, with fresh ginger and it's just way too strong. I feel like the dried ginger really helps keep it mild. Kombucha is actually kind of a misnomer, and I don't know how it happened, but the term was originally supposed to be applied to a different kind of tea um, made with a Japanese seaweed called kombu, hence the name kombucha. Um, yeah, I don't know what happened, and nobody seems to know, but basically the stuff we drink in America as kombucha comes from ancient China or Mongolia or Russia, not Japan. But here we are. You could also call it mushroom tea, even though the thing that lives in here is not a mushroom. That's another name for it. And you should also know 
that a lot of store-bought kombuchas, recently anyway, have been adding carbonated water and natural flavors and artificial flavors to their kombuchas to make them more palatable, which is fine because what you're really looking for, most people anyway, is the probiotic culture. And if that's present, really the other stuff doesn't matter 100%, but everybody has their own preferences. Um, the kombucha that you make at home might never be as fizzy as the kind that you buy in the store, and that's why. So don't feel bad about it. It's really just um, the result of manufacturing. You know, when you start manufacturing stuff, you're like compelled by money. <laughs> so you try to make a more palatable product. That's one of the ways you're going to do it, right? You're going to cut some corners. Alright, so I've made four lemon ginger gingers, and I think the last one, the last three are going to be the chai tea. Then we're going to see how much tea we actually have left in the jar. And if it's a good amount, then I'll just probably fill the rest of these up. These are 16 ounce swing top bottles, and they're pretty cheap to get. Um, they came with this funnel and a nice little scrubber thing. I, I painted this chalkboard paint on them because I was gonna write on them like which thing they are, but it always rubs off, so I just kind of gave up. So, okay, um, chai tea. This one's a little different. Um, so, it still has the half a teaspoon of tea, I mean uh, sugar, so we're gonna do that. And we'll go ahead and fill it first, and then put the spices in. So, when you make a kombucha, the tea that you use for this first fermentation, you don't want it to be flavored. You don't want any spices. All you're going to be using is green or black tea. And the reason for that has to do with the live culture. So if you use anything that's flavored, it might not work. It might grow mold. It might do all kinds of nasty, disgusting stuff, and that's the reason why you don't want to do that. So like these spices, I'm going to use cinnamon and peppercorns and cloves, if I can find them. Whole cloves. And some of these have naturally occurring fats in them. Fats can go rancid really quickly, especially if they're not refrigerated. So the fact that these are being dried is good for now, but once they get into liquid, they could turn rancid really fast. So you don't want to do that and leave it out for two weeks. If you put it in here for a few days, that's fine. So for the chai tea, I did a half a teaspoon of sugar, and now I'm going to do six whole cloves, and then six peppercorns. And this is actually a pepper mix. You could use plain black peppercorns. But this is pretty fun. It can be kind of spicy, but... Okay. So the next thing, and I've used cinnamon many times, this is... <laughs> Very important. So you want to break it into smaller pieces. So the recipe is for half of a cinnamon stick. So what I'm going to do is break it in half down the middle. It's okay if you crush it too. And the reason for that is it's going to expand a little bit when you get it inside. And it's really hard to get out of the bottle. Okay, so I've split it down the middle. And I'm just going to eyeball, like, what I feel like half of the cinnamon stick would be. What I can even do. Here, let's do this. Break them in half this way. And it's okay if it's not precise. Okay, 
So I've separated them into my little piles. This is a good size. They'll come right out that way. Okay. Oh, and the other thing that you can do is add a pinch of cardamom, but I don't have any right now, so I'm just gonna skip that. It just gives it a nice extra flavor. Cardamom is kind of sweet, um, so it's, it's really up to you. I think they have cardamom pods as well, so if you want, you can like take one of those and crush it with the cinnamon before you put it in. That would work really well too. I think this is gonna be exactly the amount that I need. That's exciting. So we've got another cinnamon stick. So you might want to know, like, why should I go through all this effort when I can go buy kombucha at the store? Um, kombucha is expensive. If you want to drink it more than once a week, you're going to be paying a lot. Three, four, six. That's one of the reasons why I started making it at home. So I wanted to drink it every day. Um, and when I had two gallons going, I definitely did. Now, because I kind of, it's winter and you know, it's like, you don't want to drink cold things all the time. I do drink one um, every few days, but it's not as much as I did over the summer. Um, but yeah, three bottles a week, it's almost $10. It depends on which kind you get. So making it at home, all you're really buying is tea and sugar and then whatever flavoring you want to use. You don't even have to flavor it. Okay, that one's done. We got one more. So basically what I'm doing here, and I don't think I articulated this earlier. So when you fill this up and you do all your stuff to it originally, that's called the first fermentation. What I'm doing with these bottles is called a secondary fermentation. And it's basically the way that you flavor the kombucha and make it more fizzy. Ooh, there's a little bit left. We'll probably just fill it up and see how much we have and then distribute it evenly. But the secondary fermentation isn't required you can just go ahead and strain out um, the gallon or so of kombucha tea that's from, from your container and then put it right in the refrigerator. It doesn't taste bad, it's just kind of sour. Um, but like I said, a lot of people like to do the secondary ferment because it makes it more like soda, you can make it tastier. See, we've got another 10 ounces here. Maybe I have another bottle. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. I've never used this one for kombucha before. Some berries in this one. That would be fun. This is gonna be pretty yeasty, so I don't want to put anything too sweet in it. Look at all those dregs. I wonder if I have any cranberries. So 
I'm just going to add a tablespoon of blueberries. It'll be really tasty. I've made them with a quarter, uh, not a quarter, an eighth of a cup of blueberries before, and that's really good. This will still be tasty, though. So, like I was saying earlier, this ferment was going for two weeks, and my last two I had to throw out because they tasted so atrocious. So that's the reason why this is only going for two weeks. Um, I had been getting into the habit of doing three weeks, but the only difference really is in the sugar content. I've tested the pH and they're still pretty similar. Like they, when it's, when it's done, it's usually between three and four at two weeks. And when I tested my five weeker, it was still around three. So I don't know if my pH strips just aren't really accurate or what the deal is with that, but it was still in the safe range to drink. You don't want to drink anything that's under two. I mean, I wouldn't even say under three would be real drinkable either. The study that I had read most recently about um, the antimicrobial effects of kombucha tea tested theirs around 2.3 or 2.9 I think so and theirs was after two weeks too so they had a really really concentrated bacteria going there okay so I'm gonna put away some of this stuff so it's out of the way and you can kind of see what I'm doing and stuff seven bottles out of that so yeah um a lot of people will drink very small amounts of kombucha every day um whatever you feel is good for you i used to drink a 16 ounce bottle every day or every other day and i loved it um but some people see effects like digestive effects with as little as four ounces so you could always do that to conserve more. That's one of the reasons why I went down to 10 ounces is because you don't really need a ton of it in order to see a positive impact. Okay, so let me get the cinnamon off of this. And what we're gonna do is just kind of wipe the stuff off the outside of the bottles before we put them away. So after you do your setup for all these bottles, you want to put them in a dark, a dark place that's not too, too hot, but not cold. Um, in my house, it's hard to find a place that's not cold, but I have this nice little whirly thing in here, and I just kind of tuck all the bottles in there. When you get them all situated, you're gonna wait three or four days, and then you're gonna go in there, and then you're gonna pop them open to let out some of the carbon dioxide, and then you're gonna keep them in there for another three days. And then you move them to the refrigerator, and you drink them nice and cold, because that's how more, how they're more delicious. Which has me thinking, you know, it's important to be healthy and to eat things and drink things that are healthy for you, but if it's not delicious, what's the point? another reason why you might want to consider making your own kombucha at home because a lot of kombuchas in the store are like full month-long fermentations they're very vinegary but you can find some probiotic beverages that are still really delicious that aren't 
like official kombuchas. The Kavita brand has kind of like probiotic drinks that aren't really kombucha. Um, I think they're called, yeah, I don't remember. But anyway, I like, there's one that's got coconut water in it. That's really good. One that's flavored like mojitos, also with coconut water. That one's delicious. Um, the Live Soda brand is also really good, especially if you don't like. I'm out of room. I need another shelf. Um, yeah. Live Soda is really good as well. They taste like cola and root beer and orange soda. I think they have like a grape one too. That's how I first got into kombucha actually. So I used to drink one of those every week just because it was tasty. And they're made with stevia, so they don't have like a ton of sugar in them. Just a little from the live cultures. Okay, so the secondary fermentation is done. So what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take our little jar, and it sounds kind of gross, but you don't need to worry about cleaning this all the time. It's already sanitized because it had the culture growing in it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add the tea, the tea concentrate. And this is the jar that I used, started using originally that came with the kit and everything. Um, has a little thermometer on the outside, which makes it a lot easier to uh, gauge how warm it is in there. You do want it to be warm, but not too hot. Um, a lot of people like to keep it between like 60 and 75 degrees. I love keeping it around the 75 degree mark. In the winter, that can be challenging. So if you get like a, a heat mat or a heating pad, you can kind of wrap around the outside that's recommended, or keep it in a warm place, but not in a sunny place. If it's sunny, it'll, it might grow like fungus and algae and mold on top of it, so you don't want that. So, I've got my four cups of tea concentrate in here, and then I'm gonna add eight more cups of water. And this, honestly, is just tap water. I'm on city water, and I leave it out to dechlorinate it, because chlorine evaporates. And I haven't had any problems doing it this way. A lot of people like to use spring water or distilled water. It really, it's really up to you, personal preference. I just wouldn't recommend using your well water. If you have um, private water and you don't have a filtration system set up, you might want to use filtered water for your kombucha. There could be all kinds of microorganisms growing in there change the taste, the texture, and the um, bacteria that's growing in there. So what are you doing? You're growing a bacteria beverage. It can be kind of gross to think about it first, but if you drink beer, there's really not a whole lot of difference. The beer gets filtered in the end for a lot of brands, but there's a lot of unfiltered ones now. I started drinking an unfiltered hard cider. It's delicious. Okay, so I got my water in there. I'm stirring it up. The reason I'm doing that is to make sure that I get a good pH reading and also to make sure that the temperature range is okay. So it's going to go up a little bit more. It's probably going to be between 68 and 70 degrees, which is the ambient temperature of the room. But if you're pressed for time and you make one like right off the bat, your tea hasn't had a chance to really cool, you can use refrigerated water to bring the temperature down. You just want to make sure it doesn't get above this mark. So like the higher the temperature go grows, the more likely it can damage the culture because heat um, can kill bacteria. So now that I've done that, I'm going to check the pH again. And we want it to be in the four range. Anything higher than that, we're going to add some vinegar to. And I usually always have to do this. 
so it's not even going to change. Look, <laughs> It's like a six. So we're going to add some more. Unfortunately, you don't want to add too much. Do it a tablespoon at a time. I have rarely had to add more than one tablespoon, so this is uncommon for me. Maybe it's because it's winter and my previous one didn't age for as long. Come on, dude. So it's closer to five. We'll go ahead and do it again just to be safe. Not recommended. Hopefully it doesn't make it taste horrible. It's hard to tell with these strips. I think that's good. It's very similar to four or five. We're just going to go with it. Okay. So now that that's ready, I'm going to take what I have left of my vinegar and get my scoby in there. So I don't know that there's a whole lot of difference between using the top scoby and the bottom scoby, but it was recommended to me. And I've been doing it, so it seems to be working pretty well. It's always got a nice flavor to it. So when you're doing this, you want to try to make sure that you don't fill it up too much. Because the scoby is going to form again, and it might be difficult for it to let air escape. So I think I'm going to do that for now, and then I'm going to monitor it later. And if it seems like it's really like puffing up, I might go in and take some of it out at a later date. And I really only didn't get like a quarter of a cup in there, so that's still pretty good. But that's it, we're done. So all we gotta do is clean up. And basically, what I do here is I put this guy on a towel. And you go around and wipe the outside. Make sure it's not all gross. Fruit flies are going to want it so bad in the summer. That's why we keep lots of paper towels on top. I did have some like muslin cloth on it that came with the jar and I got really nervous around all the fruit flies so I swapped it out. I use like three layers of paper towels. It seems to keep them away much better. Okay, where's my rubber band? Ta da! That's it. And we just keep it over here. I'm gonna put the heat mat on it again later. And we're done. That's it. That's how you do it. So, I'm gonna put. The recipes that I gave you today on my website along with a list of steps so it's a lot easier for you to go through and do. I've given a demonstration on making kombucha before um, and pretty much nothing has changed um, since that time so it's pretty much the same thing that I'm going to share with you that I shared with them. And I am supposed to be giving that demonstration again in April at the New Hampshire Veg Fest. So if you live in New Hampshire or around New Hampshire, you can definitely come to that. Um, I can give you some scobies and starter tea if you need some. I ran out last year. I only brought five, but I'm trying to work on it in advance for this year. So there's that. 
And if you ever have any questions, you know where to find me. All of the kombucha information that I mentioned before is going to be on my website too. And uh, yeah, I hope you had fun. And I hope this maybe encourages you to make kombucha yourself, or at least give it a try. Um, it can be very intimidating at first, and I know I was hesitant to start it, but I got my little kit for Christmas, and I have been doing it for a little over a year now. So I'm, I'm very pleased with it, and I hope that you are too. And if you need help with any resources, don't hesitate to reach out um, and you can catch me later in my next video where I don't know where it'll be cooking but I'll be here so I will see you then oh, hello let's get a microphone back up in here okay so how's the audio level Zeus am I still good okay <laughs> uh, so Zeus, you bring up a really important subject, uh, the alcohol level of kombucha, which uh, I do have some more information on the, the link that I've been sharing here. Um, so because it is a fermented beverage, um, uh, kombucha can contain trace amounts of alcohol. However, um, it depends on the... Um, the individual brew and a, a number of different um, factors to determine how alcoholic it is. So in order for a beverage to be non-alcoholic, it is supposed to be below 0.5% alcohol by volume. Um, typically, the amount of alcohol found in kombucha is around 0.03-ish, uh, I believe. So it depends on the situation, but in most cases it is non-alcoholic, but it is extremely hard to test the amount of alcohol in kombucha. There hasn't been, um, or there isn't a technique publicly available or widely available to get a really precise measurement on it. So like, like I said on the page there, um, it's not going to be anywhere near as alcoholic as if you drank a beer or if you drank a uh, um, hard malt beverage like Mike's Hard Lemonade or um, even a hard cider. It's, it's going to be on level or below if you had like an O'Doul's. Uh, the O'Doul's, a non-alcoholic beer, has alcohol in it, <laughs> but it is at the 0.5% um, level. So my, like I was saying in the chat earlier, my brother um, is interested in helping me determine how alcoholic, um, like my homebrew is. And uh, I'm supposed to take some readings when I make my next batch, um, probably tomorrow because I'm not going to have time to do it tonight, um, to try to figure out, uh, how alcoholic it might be because this, this is something I didn't even know <laughs> last year when I first started making it. Um, all fermented foods actually have trace amounts of alcohol. So yogurt, kefir, um, tempeh, and tofu, but those in particular, tofu and tempeh, they, they are typically cooked um, when you eat them. So any alcoholic content in those is evaporated in the cooking process. Um, but yeah, a, a lot of fermented br drinks um, that people consume that are not alcoholic do contain trace amounts of alcohol. Um, it is a concern for some people, like um, anyone who alcohol can affect their medications might want to consider not drinking it. Um, but for the average person, uh, there's, there's really no harm in it. And the probiotic benefits definitely outweigh the, um, the associated uh, potential minimal side effects of, of drinking something that's non-alcoholic but not alcohol-free. Um, another resource for people who are concerned about the alcoholic content of kombucha is to drink one that has had the alcohol extracted from it. <laughs> they actually do that now. Uh, there's a brand that's locally made in Vermont called Aquavite. Uh, they use some sort of um, vortex technology. You can read about it on their website. It's, it's pretty interesting, but 
their kombucha tastes extremely different than other ones that I've tried. So if you are looking for just a, a fizzy probiotic beverage to help you with your digestion, but you don't want um, the alcohol, the trace amounts of alcohol in it, um, that that is the perfect the perfect solution for you. And I don't know if they're available nationally yet, but they're certainly available throughout New England. And I know that um, some of the other brands of store-bought kombucha have been um, getting certified alcohol-free. But again, it, it depends on the company. So if it says alcohol-free or certified alcohol-free, it could mean either that it's been alcohol extracted or that they have compensated and basically their, their kombucha tests at such a low level that it's non-alcoholic. So, I mean, there's... There's marketing, <laughs> um, and I mean you have to you have to be sure about it when you if if that's something that matters to you you have to look for for clarification um, on that before before you um, you know buy into a, a specific brand it it doesn't matter to me again it depends on the person but um, yeah another another issue you could come into come across is that. I, and I'm not sure if this is still the case, but I'm, I believe that home brewing is, is against the law in some states. It's not in all states, but it is in some. Um, like, it's allowed in New Hampshire, but it, it might not be in other places. So if they crack down on that sort of thing, you might be fined or penalized for making kombucha because it's a very similar process as it is to beer, and you can make it more alcoholic. There are ways that you can basically turn it into kombucha wine or hard kombucha, um, which I've never tried because that doesn't interest me. But those are those are some things to consider when you venture into brewing your own kombucha at home. So I hope you guys enjoyed the demonstration. And like I was saying in there, the um, the just the directions to making kombucha, not to bring political debate into it, but it, it sounds like typical government. Well. You have to take into consideration the fact that some people's religions forbid them from drinking alcohol. So I was surprised when I found out because it's, you know, something that's sold in stores and it doesn't say on it, like in big bright letters, contains alcohol or contains trace amounts of alcohol. Um, so a lot of them now on the back will have a warning that says, um, you know, contains trace amounts of alcohol may not be suitable for um, pregnant women or children under the age of 18, um, you know, like a alert about <laughs> if you're abstaining from alcohol for political reasons or for recovery purposes, then it might not be a good fit for you. But again, it depends on the person. So let me know if you had any more questions. Um, as I was saying, the uh, instructions are going to be available on the page that I've been linking to in the chat. Um, I'll be uploading the video to YouTube as well, so I'll be embedding that in the same page. And um, you can also come and see the demonstration live. You can <laughs> see me. I'm going to be at the New Hampshire Veg Fest, which is in Manchester, New Hampshire, on April 14th. I don't think they've released the, the time of day that my kombucha demonstration is going to be. But I will also have a booth in the vendor room. I'm sharing a booth with one of my friends. She's going to be doing Reiki. And I'm going to be having my kombucha booklets. I'm going to be making kombucha t-shirts. Um, and we're going to be there all day. And it's going to be a lot of fun. So I don't know who's going to watch the booth when neither of us is there. She really wants to come to my demonstration. But she might have to stay. I don't know. We haven't talked about it yet. But yeah. So if you're in the area come by there's there's no admission fee it's all free um and they do fun things like raffles and you can buy vegan food and you can buy all kinds of little vendor items and stuff show one of those t-shirts on stream please well see the problem is that i haven't ordered them yet so hopefully i'll have them for the next stream uh the nutrition stream so i'll show them off to you uh it's really cool of course mvp mcvegan pants designed them for me uh, and it really, it really looks awesome. So, yeah. So I'll be wearing one um, at my demo. I'm sad I won't have one for PAX this weekend, but I'll have my little rusty shirt instead. So that'll, that'll still be fun. But yeah. So I'll also be at PAX East 
um, just as an attendee on Friday. So if you see me, uh, like I said, I'll be wearing my rusty t-shirt and, uh, you know, come see me and we can take selfies and it'll be fun. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's all I have for today and I'll be back next week at three o'clock on Tuesday. Um, hopefully so long as there aren't any, um, mishaps like today. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Zeus. Um, I, I wanted to, to, to give a shout out to my new follower, but I don't have the Streamlabs open. Um, so I'm gonna roll the credits and that'll that'll show everybody who, who followed and uh, did all the things today. <laughs> so I think it's just the one person, but like I said, I'm a noob. <laughs> um, if you watch the VOD or if you see this video on YouTube, um, give it a like, share it, come follow me on Twitch. Um, and we will see you next time. So thanks for coming. <laughs>